Okay, everybody, we're gonna make a press today because uh, a lot of you have been asking for it. So I'm gonna go through two different ways that you can make a wood press. You don't really have to buy a wood press from anywhere. You can make this on your own. You can look for scrap wood in your garage. You can ask a neighbor. You can look at Facebook Marketplace. Um, what you are looking for though is three quarter inch whatever you use. I'm using three quarter inch MDF because I had it in my garage. You can buy plywood at Home Depot, Lowe's, or MDF. Um, or any small hardware store. Yeah. And if they're, they're nice local. enough, they may cut it down for you. Yeah, ask them because they do have saws at, at the store so they can cut down whatever you need to be cut down. And if you can't get it cut down, if you have a circular saw, you can use a circular saw or you can use a hand saw or you can even use a Japanese pole saw. Any of those will do the trick. You can also ask a neighbor if they have any power tools that they can use. So first steps into doing all of this, our presses are 12 by 12, one square foot. Um, super easy. All you're going to have to do is grab a straight edge of any sort. It could be another piece of wood. Um, I just have a long one here. So you do just measure a quick 12 inches on this side. Go on the other side, measure 12 inches, connect the two lines. There you go. Again, 12 by 12 inches, so you need two plates. So from this side, I'm just gonna measure directly in the middle here. 12 inches up there. Twelve inches there. One more time with the straight edge. So now you have roughly two plates that are twelve inches by twelve inches. I'm going to take the circular saw. This will be a little loud at the moment, but I'm just going to run it right down here, and then I'm going to cut this off. Watch your feet because this is just going to fall straight to the floor. That's done. So also, I just have this all clamped to a small table. Um, I'm going to link some of these things um, that you can buy off Amazon really easily. So now we'll do the same thing on this side. Just give that one good clamp. That's not going anywhere. I do like to wear my safety goggles when I'm sawing because you don't want wood flying into your eye. Pretty basic stuff. All right. So that's good. So, Next step is you have your two 12 by 12 squares. I'm gonna start with the bottom plate. For your bottom plate, you're gonna use a 5 16 inch uh, drill bit to match up with your 5 16 bolts. It's a perfect match. That's what you want, 5 16 I like to use 5 16 and not one quarter because I like a little sturdier bolt. One option to drill the holes is using a drill. Uh, that's, that's probably like your easiest bet. The other way I'll show you is in a second, it's in the garage, but it's gonna be using a drill press. So if you're actually doing this as a business, get a drill press because you're gonna be making a lot of presses. And I'll show you what those look like. I like to make basically A one inch, like I like to make my holes one inch away from the border. So again, you just measure a one inch line there, 
go on the other side, one inch there, connect them up, and your intersection is at your one inch mark. One way to do this is then clamp it down. And this is just, again, the most probably convenient way that most people will do this. So I wanted to show you. So biggest thing is basically you line up your drill bit center in the intersection and go make a small hole first. Like that's pretty good, it's about an inch away. And then stay straight with the drill press. I need to get new drill bits because mine are dull. <laughs> Should not have taken that long to go through MDF, but it did. So that's so, the slower way of doing it. There's your hole, and then you gotta make four more, and I'm gonna show you how I do it, and let's go in the garage. Okay, so this is a drill press. Um, I got this for 80 bucks uh, off of Facebook Marketplace. So like, this is a bigger one. You can definitely get smaller ones. Um, this is extremely, extremely convenient because it gives you nice, nice basically straight holes uh drill press or a drill you have to kind of make sure that you're going straight down this is definitely going straight down so you're just going to make all four holes i built a little jig here there's a million jigs you use it's just to make your life easier to make more accurate cuts or more repetitive cuts so if you're doing a lot of holes like we are this is why we built that so i'm going to turn this on and make all of our holes and then i'll show you the other way. Remember, this is a 5 16 inch bit. This is for the bottom plate only. Okay, now this is your bottom plate again. You just want to use 5 16 inch. And when I say 5 16 I'm just meaning the width of the bit. So this is going to be a half inch drill bit. That's gonna be for the top plate. Because when you're putting on the top plate of the press, you always want the holes to be bigger so you have more wiggle room to easily take on and off the top plate and not struggle with it. So to do that, you take your bottom plate that has all the holes already on. So like, this is your, basically your template. Line it up. Take a pencil or a pen or whatever. And you just wanna kind of have an approximate place where you're gonna be drilling. Remember, it's a half inch bit, so it's gonna be bigger than these holes. And you'll have that wiggle room. So there they all are. Again, you can use your drill. We're gonna go to the drill press. Don't do that. Luckily they're built pretty tough, but yes, <laughs> try not to drop your tools. It's not always a good thing. So. <laughs> back to the garage. All right, back into the garage. You'll replace your bit your 5 16 bit with the half inch bit because we're working on the top plate now. Exactly. This is a good point. Always make sure your bottom plate holes are smaller than your top plate. So we'll go for it. Okay, back to the assembly part. All right, first way I'm gonna show you is using hex bolts. 
Um, as you can see, it's a hexagon shape. There's, these are the two different, two different ways I'm gonna show you. The hex bolt way, as you can see, it has no little nub coming out from it. This is a carriage bolt, smooth head, little square nub. This is a hex bolt, hex shaped head, no nub. So I'm gonna show you the hex side first. Oops. You need the first. washer. Yes. Rachel, it's so good. <laughs> so you'll take a 516th washer. You'll need eight of these for this configuration. So you'll take that. Go from the bottom. And then you'll also throw one more washer on top. And then you will go down. Also, all of these bolts are six inches. That's about the max you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot, or usually generally, maybe some small shops will have larger ones. We use eight inch bolts like this. We use and eight inch carriage bolts. They have the rounded bottom, but there's no threads here. So that makes, we'll show you how to do those too. Yeah, because to do this system, there's threads going all the way here, which allows the nut to go all the way down to the washer. I wouldn't be able to do that with the eight inch bolts, but I'll show you. And you might be able to find eight inch bolts that have threads. Um, I just haven't yet. And these work totally great for me, so. So for this, if you see, you need to tighten this nut, but if you just go round and round like this, that's spinning. So you need to have two half inch wrenches, one to go on the top nut, and the other one, this is just a crescent wrench. You can just adjust how big you want it. That's fine. And you just need it to like hold it. And so then you just hold that one and you turn this one up. And then there you go. That's it. So you'd go all the way around and do this for every, for every single one and then you'll literally then be able to put your press on. Okay. And you'll have basically stacks of paper, cardboard, and chipboard All in here. All your flowers in here. Yeah, and so it'll be basically that length. So let's Let show. me show them. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so you put all of your, everything in here, put this on top. After that, you'll do one more washer, okay. and then you will, tighten it up like that. And that would be all your flowers. Okay. All your flowers, yes. So then I'll show you the other way. So one advantage of this way, um, it's, it's up to you, honestly, but your bolts are never gonna come out. So like they're, they're stuck in there. This is a really, really secure way of doing it. Um, it's just personal preference. I'll show you the way we do it. It uses a little less hardware. That's maybe probably why I did it. Um, but you will also, if you want to take this off for any reason, you need your two wrenches. And there you go. You just got to do a quick loosen and then you take off your nut. Like so. Take off your washer, remove that, and you're back to square one. So now I'll show you carriage bolts. Carriage bolts are gonna be a little different. So you don't need to put a washer on when you put this on. See how there's a gap? That little metal square nub is gonna actually get recessed into the wood. And I'll show you how to do that. So after that, you'll end up putting a washer down. Again, you'll thread your hex nut all the way down to the bottom. Like that. 
you only need one wrench now. So you'll take a half inch wrench and there you are, go on this side bridge. You can see it. And so you'll see it getting recessed into whatever you're gonna use, wood, MDF, whatever. It's gonna go into it. Like that. You wanna lift it up and try. Oh, yeah. So now it's gonna be, that, that carriage bolt is nice and flush against the bottom of the wood. And then you want to actually take this bolt. I mean, I guess you could you could honestly just keep this like this now. You can keep the the nut on there if you wanted to. Then this isn't this bolt is never going to move, or you can take it off. It's really up to you. Um, it doesn't matter. I just take it off. This is my preferred way because I like having the rounded surface of the carriage bolts on the table rather than this big clunky thing. But you know, whatever. It's up to you. But yeah, so like you Same. can either you can either keep this set up like that if you want to, or you can take it off, but this being recessed in there keeps this bolt pretty sturdy in there. Over time, this is gonna get loose because you are gonna be hitting your bolt, putting on the top plate a bunch. Um, so if you want it to never ever get dislodged from the wood, then I would suggest keeping the washer nut set up on top of there. So after that, it's the same thing. You just go around and do that to all four sides. You'll put this on and it's the same deal, this doesn't change. You put another washer on. And again, all of the things that I'm using right now are 5 sixteenths. So all of your washers are 5 sixteenths. All of your wing nuts are 5 sixteenths. All of your hex nuts are 5 sixteenths. And all of your carriage bolts are 5 sixteenths. It's my preferred size. You can try a quarter inch, they're a little cheaper but I like the sturdiness of 5 16 bolts more. You can use 3 8 if you want to, but that's overkill in my opinion. Okay. Last thing I want to show you all is 6 inch carriage bolt, 8 inch carriage bolt. This of course doesn't have your course, uh, your threads on it. So I'll show you how we actually allow um, how we get this secured in here without having the threads go down to the bottom. Exactly. Rachel is way better with using her words than I am, so it's always nice having her <laughs> to correct me. So the way, this was really easy to bring the nut all the way down to the, to the bottom here because there's threads all the way around here. There's no threads here, so an easy way to go around that is just buy a bunch of 5 16 washers and they're they're pretty cheap so and you only need like a handful but you just go around and you basically stack it this is just my kind of way of doing this and once you get it past the once you get it actually on the course line then you can go down and do the same thing over again bring your nut all the way down like that and you'll do the same thing and you just tighten it all the way around and then it'll like that and then it is nice in there i would recommend though like we do take all these off i don't suggest keeping those on if you're using a six incher then yes, you can keep one washer on, but I think it's kind of goofy to leave all those on. It's not necessary at all, so. But you could see here just the difference in heights, like. <laughs> Especially when you are um, pressing when you're stacking flowers. stacking a lot like, of flowers. Your stack will get high pretty quickly because you are using a oh, pretty boy. good amount of paper and cardboard and chipboard, so. 
I would definitely recommend finding eight inch bolts. Um, we get ours from Bolt Depot. You don't have to buy them in bulk. Sometimes the presses only come in like four inch bolts, which doesn't leave you a lot of room to actually press flowers. This is why I recommend making your own press. Um, it's just, it's super easy. And then you have tools if you want to use them again. I always recommend like trying to do something on your own first, um, such as just making a simple press instead of buying something. I'd say try to just be resourceful first and make do with what you have. I'm, I guarantee you can probably find used wood, used three quarter inch plywood online from Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Um, just want a good press that's sturdy. Uh, MDF is actually pretty heavy. We use Baltic birch plywood, um, which is super heavy. That's what we use for all of our presses. I'd say like 95%, um, but you can use just regular sanded plywood. Just make sure it's three quarter inch and not half inch because half I inch always, yeah. can bend. I always hand. feel like I'm going to crack the half inch plywood when we're tightening up the presses. I'm like, this is going to break. Hasn't yet, but three quarter inch is better. Yeah. Okay. That's it. A any other closing comments? I think we've covered it. Yeah. If you have questions, we'll try to answer them. Um, but honestly, this video should just just watch the video, look at what you need, and just attempt it. That's all. Goodbye. Bye-bye.